Let's go. Hey everyone, Anthony Aries here, and uh, on the line I've got the legendary Brad Goss. Um, he is really one of my good friends. It's not one of those things where I write in an email, he's my friend so Our, that you can the buy fake, his The shit. fake friendship where we've never actually met or hung out. <laughs> yeah, like that. it's not like he's my friend so that you can buy his shit through my link. No, he really is my friend. We talk he's more coming than to my. Time. He's coming to my wedding renewal in Vegas. That's how close we are. Yes, in August, in uh, in August. So we're gonna go to a, tre- a Trekkie conference together too. My first one. <laughs> my so, team. yes. So so uh, we're real friends, folks, and uh, it's it's really an honor to have Brad here. And uh, I got to tell you something. It's really crazy because before we became friends, I had known of Brad. I had known about what he had done, and uh, it's really crazy how our friendship unfolded. And 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 it's like. I remember the first time I spoke with you on Skype, I pinched myself after the conversation and I looked at over at Heather because she sits next to me and I'm like, can you believe I just spoke with Brad Goss? (laughs) (laughs) So everyone, here's Brad Goss. Say hi, everyone. Say hi, Brad, to everyone. Hi, Brad. (laughs) And, uh, you know, it's really crazy like how our friendship unfolded. It just started with a little project that we did for D-Passport. I promoted something for Brad and from that we became amazing friends since then uh, since August we've become close I've shared a lot of personal things with Brad Brad shared a lot of personal things with me we get on Skype regularly he mentors me through a lot of things he mentored me through my PayPal debacle he made me the hero that I am to the community because of that so <laughs> I'm super grateful for everything that you've done for me and my business and uh, I just wanted to formally introduce you to everybody. We've never done one of these before, which we should have done a long time ago. I don't know what the hell happened. I've got really busy somehow, and you got really busy, but we should have done one of these a long time ago. We do a lot of these. We just don't record them. Yes, exactly. And we don't we don't send them out to everybody right. <laughs> publicly. So I wanted to have Brad on here today because he is – I mean, this guy is so far ahead of – his time with internet marketing and 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 I, he's a modest guy, but he really is a high level thinker. Every time I finish a conversation with him, I literally have to like digest and marinate on the stuff that he has gone over with me because it's just so advanced. And I think it's because you know part of the industry that you were in, you talk about how you guys were always ahead. Brad used to, you know, Brad got his start in in um, porn in an interesting part of internet marketing. In porn. I got my in, porn. in porn biz. That's right. If you wanted to sell anything online in 1997, uh, you know, people weren't buying ebooks and there was no Kindle and the, you know, like, yeah. you had to uh, uh, you had to be innovative and and uh, guess what? All the geeks were were paying for porn, so uh, that's what I sold. Yeah. And 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 that industry's always been far ahead of our industry, right? The info industry. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, it's funny I think about uh, you know, when I put my, put my first movie on a website, uh, how many people contacted me back in the day that you know the, the the preferred method of contact was ICQ and people would contact me on ICQ and they'd say how the hell did you get a movie on your website you know oh my god like a movie <laughs> you know like like it was it, it was like groundbreaking to put movies on your website in the in the late 90s and and we were doing that back then when it you know when when there was no flash video there's no embed codes or easy video player type software out there you know we had to figure it all out and how to, how to make it work for people it was uh it was a lot of fun blazing those trails early early on and i kind of try and bring that uh mentality to my business today and the late 90s is is that's like the dawn of the internet you know i remember 1993 is when i was messing around with web crawler i mean we didn't even really have a search engine back then i mean that's what was around yep um, and then what was it? Net Net uh, Net Net Netscape came out. Yep. After that, Netscape so, was ninety six, I think. Yep, ninety six. You're right. And so for you to be putting videos up in the late nineties, and I just want to put that in a perspective for people. That's a big deal. That's a yep. huge deal. That's a huge deal. And and um, and and so that's uh, you know someone else told me that this too that the porn industry has just always been ahead of what we're doing. You guys have always been ahead of what you're of what we're doing over here. Oh yeah, it, and, and it's I mean if you think about it, it's an industry. You know, take what you think what you want about adult entertainment. You may love it or hate it or somewhere in between. Who cares? They I love are. It. I love uh, it. I'm, I'm be honest with you. I love it. <laughs> they love they it. are at at the forefront of a lot of innovation. If you take a look at, um, I mean, think about this for a second, right? You've got um, uh, photography, 
you've got videography, you've got um, um, uh, satellite, uh, in, in, in hotel on demand content, all of that was driven by the, 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 the demand for adult content. Yeah. Um, uh, you wouldn't have the same speed of internet today if it wasn't for the fact that a bunch of geeks wanted faster porn downloads in the late 90s and early 2000s. Um, and, and, you know, that was, I mean, there was no reason to have a cable modem. I mean, I shouldn't say no reason, but there was, not like it is today, there was no right. reason to have a high-speed connection in the late 90s unless you were downloading a lot of porn videos because there right. was no YouTube. There wasn't a lot of that kind of stuff on the internet. So, um uh, it's 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 kind of interesting how it's driven innovation. There's actually a book out um, called I think it's called The Erotic Engine, and he talks about how uh, even even back in the day of cave drawings, it's always adult content has always driven art uh, and the production of art in 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 many ways, and has created technology that has been trickled down to you know non uh, adult categories and non. Wow, I never thought things. about that. That's pretty interesting. Yeah. So. You, 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 you're a porn guy, or was a, you was were a porn, porn guy. guy. You were a porn guy. You've brought that innovation over to us over here. You're, you're, you've created over 300 products, which I think is absolutely unbelievable. Um, and you come out and openly say that a lot of that was based on PLR, but here's the thing. I have access to a lot of PLR, and I've not been able to coordinate 300 products. So... That's pretty significant, man. You know, that's that's pretty awesome that, that you've got a system set up to be able to do that and you've got them all out there and um, generating revenue from all that stuff. It's, it's pretty awesome, man. And, and yesterday I sent everybody a video that I sort of twisted Brad's arm for him to let, a, let him share this with us. It's a super ninja trick of how to drive thousands of visitors to your website. If you haven't seen that video, I'm going to put it under this video so you can go and check it out. He let us have that for absolutely nothing. He shared that technique with us. And in that in that video, Brad also shares how he got 250,000 visitors a day to one of his sites. So you want to make sure and watch the video. It's beneath this. Um, but that's not even why we're here. The real main driving reason why we're here is because tomorrow is one of the biggest days in Brad's business career. And as a good friend... I want to support him as much as possible, uh, and 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 uh, I, I I want you to support him as much as possible. Uh, he's launching his first self-published book. I was helping my mom move, and I was going to bring the book with me and take pictures of it. I, I drove one. this twenty-six foot truck. There it is, right there. I have one. I drove this twenty-six foot truck from Orlando to Boston, and I was going to stop at every one of the state signs and take a picture with the book. That would have been cool. I know, and we were in such a hurry because we were so behind that I forgot the book. But no the book worries. is right there. Brad just held it up. If you could just hold it up one more time, Brad, just so that folks can see oh, it. This baby. If I must. Lo- <laughs> yeah. I love my book. I love holding it yeah. up. There's it's a it's awesome. How to be a high functioning. Uh, how to be a high functioning entrepreneur. And uh, let me tell you something. I read the whole book, and uh, it took me a while to read it. I don't mean like from the point I started to laughter. I mean for me actually picking it up and reading it because I had so much going on. And Brad's like, listen, I really need your feedback. It's only going to take you two hours to read it. Please just just start reading it because I really need your feedback before I launch this. So I took time out and I read it and he was right. It only, it only took two hours. And it's a fantastic book to read because um, what Brad does is he keeps the chapters short and sweet. He goes right to the point, tells you the good, the bad, the ugly, and he interlaces everything with awesome stories. So it's not just like this, you know, everything is great, let's all hold hands and sing kumbaya, my lord. No, it's like got the good, the bad, and the ugly, which is what I really love. He doesn't go so deep into something that you become bored. He touches on it and then moves on. And it's like once you start reading it, you're not going to be able to stop because every chapter has an intriguing title and you want to see what's next. So it's kind of like the Howard Stern shock shock value. Like people listen to Howard Stern because they, even when they hated him, they wanted to see what he was going to say next. Listen, get this book. You're going to learn a ton a ton from it. Is there is there some stuff that we can talk about in the book a little that that you know maybe we can give some value here to get people excited about getting this book tomorrow? Yeah, I, I'm I'm happy to talk about anything. I mean, uh, what did I mean? Why don't you share with with us what you got? What what your favorite part of the book was, or what the lesson was, your big takeaway was from the book? Uh, my big takeaway from the book was that you don't have to be like, you know, a super intelligent like college graduate to have success in your life. 
you could be super intelligent and not have a college degree. I went and finished my college degree. It took me 14 years to do it. I spent $80,000. It was really foolish to do, to spend that much money because at the end of the day, you don't need a college degree to have massive success in your life. So, you know, Brad's a high school dropout. Um, and it's not because he's not intelligent. It was just he was so far advanced. He got bored with – he wasn't stimulated enough. He got bored and he's like, screw this. I'm going to go out and make some money. So what I took away from it was have no fear, right? Take action. And you may not get the result that you expect out of that action, but you're going to learn as you're taking these actions. And there are no failures. There are only lessons. And those lessons are going to be worth more than even the result you were looking for because now you know what not to do in the future. Yeah. So I got that out of it. I got that Brad is bold. Boldness is rewarded. He took a lot of bold actions in his life. Uh, he went against you know, groupthink quite a few times in his life. He launched successful businesses, and then those businesses evolved, and he went out of business. But he didn't let that stop him. He got right back on the horse and did it again. It's the same with me. It's, you see this, you know, a lot of people... I have a lot of people write me in and say, oh my God, if I hear another one of these stories where a guru has lost everything and made it back or it was on the brink of losing everything and made it through. But listen, these are true stories. It's, we share them with you because they're the truth. We're going through the pains that you are going through. We didn't just wake up one morning and, hey, I'm successful. Think about you it know? this way. Here's, here's a way to think about this. And, and, and you just saying it out loud made me think of it this way, but... Uh, whatever career path you choose in life, whether you choose to work for someone else for the rest of your life or you choose to be an entrepreneur, you're going to have ups and downs. If you have a job, it's guaranteed that in your lifetime, you're not going to keep that same job. It's not like it was in the 40s when you'd go work for a company and stay there until you retire and get a gold watch and a plaque and a party and a, a pension. So um, whether you choose to be a, 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 you know, an employee or an entrepreneur, you're going to have ups and downs. And, and for entrepreneurs, those ups and downs are sometimes closing down a business and starting a new one. Or yeah. sometimes it's, it's it, you know, in my case, I've, I've, lost, I've lost businesses, I've sold businesses and been extremely successful at selling businesses. So sometimes it's, sometimes it's good. It's just like in your career, you might, you know, get a promotion or trade one job for a better job. Well, sometimes I sell a business for a better, and then get into a better business or have the cash to do something a little more fun. And then other times I do something and it doesn't work out and I lose that business, just like you might get fired or get laid off from a job. Being an entrepreneur and being an employee are very similar to each other in terms of the ups and downs. It's just that as an entrepreneur, the ups are way better. <laughs> yes, they are. They are, man. They are. And it's to the point that people see our ups and they, they only see like how the success we're having right now. They only see the front of it, right? They don't see what's behind the scenes, right? So a lot of it's not Ferraris and bikinis behind the scenes like a lot of people think it is. I mean, we go through our struggles, but like what Brad says, when the ups are up, they're really high. They're so good that we attract people to us, and they think that that's you know that that's all it is is just what they're seeing. They didn't see what it took for us to get there, and that's what I love about the book is Brad. Like he, he opens up and he gives full disclosure, full transparency. He lets you know when things were great, when things sucked, what he did to keep going. He talks about businesses that he sold. He talks about, you know, uh, one of my favorites is the story that he talks about with um, uh, one, one of the girls he hired to do webcam videos and how she just wanted to be an artist in the beginning and uh, – <laughs> And it, it evolved into more of that. And it was just, just really good stories. It's very entertaining. You're going to get a lot out of it. Um, I, I think that, the, you know, and I'm going to tell you, like I, I already told Brad, the only thing that I wish Brad had done more of was talk more about the porn business. And uh, we, we, we both concluded that that's going to be, I think, his follow-up book because there's, there's so much demand for people wanting to know more about that. He does touch on it and he does you know, uh, tell great stories, but it's like you want to know more, which is good because it'll open up for another book. Um, I think if you're in a, in a point in your life where you're going with groupthink, you're going with what everybody else is doing, this will be a great book for you because it'll make you realize that being bold is going to reward you in many ways than you ever thought possible. And uh, going against groupthink is a good thing. I mean, this is a pretty, I mean, like right now, here we are, we're both talking about a book that has to do with smoking marijuana it's against group think to do this right <laughs> i'm going to tell everyone that i know to buy this book excuse me i have allergies i'm up here in massachusetts and um 
it's against group think to do this. You know, it's crazy. Here I am. I'm going to tell everyone, my gang, go buy a book about a guy who smokes marijuana and is a successful <laughs> entrepreneur and used to be a porn producer. <laughs> but here's the thing. You're going to learn a lot from this guy. And uh, I'm going to tell you something right now. It Don't let that, don't let the, the marijuana and the porn or any of that um, let you think that there's not a lot of value in this book. It takes a lot of guts to do what Brad is doing, and, and that's why boldness is rewarded. He's, 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 he's doing something that, that no one in our industry is doing. I don't know any internet marketer that's done this. Uh, no, I, I don't either. Uh, and I think that, um, you know, the... the the, the pot angle on the book, I mean, you're, if you're watching this, you're probably an internet marketer. The, the pot angle on the book is a marketing angle. I am a pothead, or I wouldn't have put that on the book. But um, but the reality is that uh, if I just made this another book about making money on the internet or starting your own business online, it would it, it would wash. It would, it, would, right. it would get lost in the dust. And uh, I had to make it bold. I had to make it kind of match my lifestyle and my personality. And, and that's why I made it what it is. And it's not... I, you know, uh, it's not a kind of book that's going to tell you to smoke pot in every chapter. In fact, there's really only one chapter where I talk about it, and 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 the rest of the time, uh, um, it's not really mentioned, other than the fact that it's just a recreational activity that I tend to enjoy, and and uh, um, that's it's it's kind of part of my personality. Anybody who knows me knows that I am a, what I refer to as a high functioning entrepreneur. I'm you know I'm uh, I, I'm fairly successful. You know I'm I'm, I'm free. My wife and I don't have any. Uh, bosses or investors to answer to or anything like that. So I, I, I consider that successful. Uh, it's my definition of successful is not answering to others and being free. Yep. Yep. Um, and, and that's kind of the life that we live. And so that's, that's being a high functioning entrepreneur to me is, is, is having that lifestyle, whether you smoke pot or not, I don't think it's relevant, but, yep. um, it's, it's just kind of a fun angle for the book. And if you're a marketer, you know, that positioning is everything. Packaging is everything. Uh, yep. you know, the book still has good lessons, but if it was, you know, uh, global conversation or some other bullshit nobody would buy it right nobody would buy it yeah no. and, and and you're honest dude you tell the truth about everything like you know in the in the video that i shared with everybody yesterday the video training that's beneath this video you watch that video in the first few minutes brad pulls up a ridiculous looking uh, mercedes slr gullwing it's a half a million dollar car and then there's an r8 in there too and he comes out and says, listen, these are my cars. He could have said that. They were. Nobody would have known. He could have said nothing and just let you in your mind assume that he owned those cars. And you would have not have known either way. And you would have assumed, oh, my God, this guy owns those car, these cars. He's, he's, he's a baller. I want to I want to learn from this guy. But no, he comes right out and tells you, listen, full disclosure, I don't own these cars. This is the kind of guy that I like to associate myself with. This is the kind of guy that... I want to continue to be friends with for the rest of my life and grow with him and help him grow his business like he's helped me grow my business and uh, he's going to help you grow your business. If you if you get inside this guy's circle, listen, I've invested heavily it, a lot of stuff that Brad has taught me. I've invested a lot of time and money in when he's telling me to do something. I've gone and taken my money and taken action on it and I've made a lot of money from it. I belong to his mastermind group. Um, I spent, I invest a lot of time with him if you take out a little bit of time and you invest in, in what Brad is teaching you in this book, um, you're going to have success with it. And, and uh, it'll be a great way. I mean, yesterday we showed you some great stuff. If you're still on the fence about this book, you should watch this video below. It's a phenomenal training. He's going to show you how to get thousands of visitors without having to create any content or pay for any traffic. Um, and you're, you'll get to relate to Brad. You'll get to bond with Brad, and you'll see that, hey, he's a real deal, and you're going to want to buy his book. So tomorrow I'm going to send you the link to his book uh, so that you can get it. It goes live at noon on 420, and uh, that's an appropriate date because 420 is when everyone smokes marijuana at 4 o'clock, <laughs> 20 past 4. So he's going live at 420, um, April 20th at noon, Eastern Standard Time. Now, is there anything you want to let anybody know? Like, Is there like one thing that someone should do right now in their business that you can throw out at them? That will help them. I know that that might be a tough question to throw at you, but no, I think there's lots of things people can do in their businesses. Um, for me, a lot of it has to do with kind of mindset. So thinking about um, uh, what, you know what it is that you want to stop doing. And so for me, uh, you know, I, I talk to a lot of guys like yourself uh, who are sort of solopreneurs or they have one or two people on staff. 
And um, for me, one of the easiest things I ever did, or one of the best things I ever did, was I, I comp- completely freed myself from email, customer service, um, any of the kind of day-to-day minutia of running my business I don't get involved in. Uh, and I know there's different schools of thought. There are there are guys out there that will tell you, oh, no, you have to be transparent and, and approachable and everybody should be able to reach you by hitting the reply button on their email or on Twitter or you should give your mobile right. number to every customer so that they can text you in the middle of the night right. or whatever. Like, there are people out there that literally condone this kind of behavior and it's not scalable. Uh, If you want to, you know, if you, I mean, if you think about it, uh, the the analogy I always use is the CEO of Walmart isn't working the customer service counter and taking refunds. Um, And so you should be in in a similar situation and and, uh, uh, complaints, refunds and uh, uh, resolved complaints and unresolved complaints should be on a PowerPoint slide that you see every quarter from your staff. And yep. if those numbers change uh, or, or along the way they're starting to change, then you need to be alerted and, and, and maybe de- deal with it. But one of, the, one of the best and smartest things I ever did in my business was I got out of the way of my employees and I let them do their job. So if you have a designer and, and a copywriter on staff and those two people are trying to middleman through you on a job, yep. Yep. connect them together. It, 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 you know, it's funny how many entrepreneurs just don't do that one thing. It's like you have three outsourcers working on a project. Why are you in the middle of all of them? Like, sure, some things have to be decided by you, but a lot of the time it's between those two people. You know, my my support persons, you know, I, I have a few support people, but one of my support girls, uh, she deals with drip blogs. And if a customer has a problem and it's something related to our hosting, she doesn't come to me and say, hey, can you open a ticket with the host? She opens a ticket with the host. So... Um, if, if you're in that situation where even if you have some people on staff, but they're coming to you to put out fires, you need to learn, you need to have them learn that you're not the fireman and that you can get out, you'll just get out of their way. And every time they come to you with something, you just connect them together and yep. you say, oh, hey, you know what? Why I'm going to put you two together on Skype right now because you're both working on the same project. And that way, uh, you know, you don't need to talk to me and wait for me. And, and just try and reduce the friction between people. And you are that friction point a lot of the time. And when you take yourself out of it, uh, it's, it's liberating because it gives you creative time to, to, be, to be the, the entrepreneur, the idea generator, the, the new business development type of person, uh, and, and let them de- deal with the day-to-day. That's an awesome, awesome tip, man. Um, that's a really good tip. And that's something that I need to continue to work on. Somehow I'm still in the center of all my stuff. And it's something that I definitely need to continue working on. And uh, I don't know if it's like a, a, a trust thing or a, an in-control thing or maybe I've trained my employees to do that. You've trained them tr- to do that. They're, yeah. they, they've learned that they can come to you to solve their problems. And yeah. um, the reality is that uh, people who work for you, you know, when, when I worked for somebody else, it was the same way. I didn't want to think. Right. I want to think, but only as far as they want me to. And so if yeah. I know that I can, you know, that, that customers have problems and I can go to them with the problems and they'll give me solutions, then I'm going to keep taking those problems to them. But if, if those bosses start saying to me, hey, uh, what would you do if this was your business or how would you solve this problem if I, w- if I were on vacation this week? Yeah. And, and it's amazing how they'll come back with the answer that you were going to come back with anyway. But right, then next right. time, they'll just ask themselves that question. Well, you know what? He's, right. gonna, he's just right. going to ask me, what would I do if he was on vacation? So they'll only come to me with something that I need to really deal with. Like, hey, uh, you know, like last week, we, we, you know, we screwed up something with one of our Facebook ads. And we had a terms of service violation. I had to deal with that, right? Like I had to, I had to put that fire out. But unless it's something sort of extreme like that, um, everything else is kind of, small potatoes and can be dealt with by by those people without your interaction and and it's amazing how how much smoother things run when you're not in the middle of all that stuff yep yep i i would have to agree that uh i've i've seen a little bit of that and it does work yeah it's just hard letting go it is it can be i mean i had you know i had a good conversation with a friend the other day who's having trouble with this very subject and just you know i could see him visibly struggling with just talking about letting go of his email yeah. Yeah, I hear you, dude. Well, folks, I hope you enjoy this little uh, interview that we've got with Mr. Brad here. And um, listen, check out the video below if you haven't seen it yet. It'll be further bonding. You'll get to get inside this guy's head for a little bit and see how he thinks. Uh, it's a really innovative way to get thousands of visitors to your site. Um, on that note, love you, bro. Big hug. Love you, too. Thank you. <laughs> Stay out of trouble. I will. And uh, by Chronic Marketer tomorrow. Yes, tomorrow at noon. Noon I will, Eastern uh, time. Email, I will email you the link tomorrow at noon. Let's try to get it 
at noon. Let's help Brad get bestseller status. This is a big deal for him. He wants Thank to you. get bestseller status. It would be we would we would be part of breaking a, a record in internet marketing niche because nobody's launched a book like this before. We'd be part of making history tomorrow. So let's help him out. And on a side note, tomorrow's my mom's birthday, and it'd be pretty cool to tell my mom I'm a bestseller on her birthday. Yes, that is that would be awesome. I want to be a I want to be a reason for helping you tell your mom that. So nothing makes me happier than making my mom proud. There you go. Of what I've done. So uh, so tomorrow, folks, we'll see you at noon. Yours Th for prosperity, Anthony Aries. Thanks.